inspiring speakers and more opportunity to network with uh, network with and meet with eminent global thought leaders to share your ideas for creating partnerships, generating resources and building synergistic relationships with like-minded people from across the globe. Because we got some incredible people who are going to be sharing ideas with you, who are going to be telling you uh, a little bit about their life, about their journey. And of course, after that, uh, we have uh, uh, the opportunity where you guys get to interact with our speakers and with each other. This is a phenomenal networking opportunity for everybody in the room and of course, a place to learn something from some incredible people. So let me introduce to you the co-founder of More Than Mics and Spoken Word Artist. She started performing at the age of 13 with the Big Mic. Last year she began a new venture, More Than Mics, with her startup uh, with her partner Prachi Mashru, a fellow poet, to create further platforms and curate creative stages for the various performing arts. More Than Mike's poetry, uh, poetry event, Blind Poetry, has been featured by numerous publishing houses such as Hindustan Times, Midday and more. Her video, a Brown Girl's Guide to Gender, reached 1 million views within two days of its release, post which she has been featured on the Hindustan Times, Bayside Journal, The Quint and more. It was an incredible video and the maker of that video is here with us. So let's give a big round of applause, an Esperance round of applause, and welcome on stage, Aranya Johar. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. I'd like to begin by quoting Dylan Moran. People will kill you over time, and how they'll kill you is with tiny harmless phrases, like be realistic. So I'm 18, I don't know much about the world. I'm sure there's nothing I could tell you that you don't already know. So I'm not going to tell you my story, I'm going to tell you other people's stories. So I'm going to tell you why we shouldn't pass on our passion. So I'm going to begin by showing you two short videos of two spoken word pieces that have changed the world in their own ways. Explaining my depression to my mother, a conversation. Mom, my depression is a shapeshifter. One day it is as small as a firefly in the palm of a bear. The next, it's the bear. On those days, I play dead until the bear leaves me alone. I call the bad days the dark days. Mom says try lighting candles. When I see a candle, I see the flesh of a church. The flicker of a flame sparks of a memory younger than noon. I am standing beside her open casket. It is the moment I learn every person I ever come to know will someday die. Besides, Mom, I'm not afraid of the dark. Perhaps that's part of the problem. Mom says I thought the problem was that you can't get out of bed. I can't. Anxiety holds me a hostage inside of my house, inside of my head. Mom says where did anxiety come from? Anxiety is the cousin visiting from out of town. Depression felt obligated to bring to the party. Mom, I am the party. Only I am a party I don't want to be at. Mom says, why don't you try going to actual parties? See your friends. Sure, I make plans. I make plans, but I don't want to go. I make plans because I know I should want to go. I know sometimes I would have wanted to go. It's just not that much fun having fun when you don't want to have fun, Mom. <sighs> you see, Mom, each night, Insomnia sweeps me up in his arms, dips me in the kitchen in the small glow of the stove light. Insomnia has this romantic way of making the moon feel like perfect company. Mom says try counting sheep, but my mind can only count reasons to stay awake, so I go for walks. But my stuttering kneecaps clank like silver spoons held in strong arms with loose wrists. They ring in my ears like clumsy church bells, reminding me I am sleepwalking on an ocean of happiness. I cannot baptize myself in. Mom says happy is a decision, but my happy is as hollow as a pinpricked egg. My happy is a high fever that will break. Mom says I am so good at making something out of nothing and the 
impression to my mother is Sabrina. Sabrina got this opportunity because she believed that poetry was the right platform to talk about something she truly cared about. After this piece went up, it got a lot of interaction and she got to tie up with organizations that gave her the platform to connect with people who are going through similar mental illnesses, create a platform that is safe and let them get resources where they could get help. All because one poet realized that maybe her academics could be more than just that. I'd like to show you our next artist. Let's meet Emma Krenzer. Emma Krenzer is a student of ne Nebraska Western University and she is studying art. This university isn't mainly an art university. She had the option, so she went for it. So when she was in her art class, she got a project based on maps, quoting her. The prompt for this project was to create some kind of map. I created a map of human touch on another human's body and its lasting impact. Now there are so many ways you could go with maps, but Emma had a very peculiar approach to this and this took over the internet. This is what she made. She made, she the first to pose naked and she explained with, fin with her finger paints how one person's touch can impact people. If you see the color coding, purple is for her mother, blue is for her father, green is for her siblings, yellow for her friends, orange for her lovers and red for someone she said no to. Through this one piece, Emma connected with women, even men, over borders about something that is quite, usually quiet about. Over borders, she connected with people over one art project that her university presented to her. How many students like Emma are we limiting just because certain societies and certain schools don't believe in art? How many Emmas are we holding back? How many platforms are we not creating just because we don't believe that art can change the world? When this piece went up and this video went up and she spoke about her art piece, people started sharing this picture, talking about their assault, their harassment. It became a safe space online to talk about this and it was all because one university gave students the creative liberty to take that project and make it as they wanted. This is how art can change the world. How many students like Emma have we forced into streams of occupation they don't enjoy? Let's meet Karishma Mehta. Karishma Mehta is the founder of Humans of Bombay. You may have heard of her or seen her. Karishma was a business and economics major student. She never took any lessons in photography, but now she runs a pictorial based blog. I'm sure you've heard of Humans of Bombay. Karishma Mehta created a platform for other people to talk about things which they wouldn't otherwise. Karishma Mehta gives people like Sara Patni a chance to talk about her views of marriage and how she fought for her son. Through Humans of Bombay, Sara Patni got the opportunity to reach the government and make it feasible for single parents to get passports for their children. Something which would not have happened as easily maybe if it wasn't for Humans of Bombay, if it wasn't for Karishma Mehta realizing that she is more than her economics and business major. People like Sapna Bhagnani, Milan Suman and more people, these doll sellers, watchmen, got a chance to talk about things, got a chance to be heard over a platform of over billions of people just because Karishma Mehta realized that maybe she could use her photography for more things. Maybe there was more to her than her business and economics major. You want to be more than her degree. My question is, how many stories will go unheard and unnoticed just because an artist wasn't given a platform? The next person is someone I'm sure everybody here knows and the next person is someone all of us look up to. Let's meet Bharka Dath. Bharka Dath studied in St. Stephen's College in Delhi with a degree in English Literature. She got the privilege of pursuing a passion she believes in. She got the privilege of not passing out on her passion. And look at what she's done. She's got a Padma Shri in 2012. She was awarded the TV Personality of the Year among more. And through her and through all the other artists I've mentioned, They've got a chance to create a platform for, for an urgency or for a topic they truly care about. How many people like Parka Dath aren't getting the platform because art isn't accepted in India? How many people like Parka Dath, like Emma, like Karishma Mehta are afraid of the fact that people are saying what So how many students like Barka who have the potential of being among the best at their art who may to reconsider? Sometimes through parents, sometimes through school, sometimes through your peers. I speak at a point of privilege. I realize I come from a family and I have friends who are very supportive of my poetry venture. But if you imagined 
that I would be here at the age of 18 talking to you about this. Imagine how many other 18 year olds, 14 year olds, 10 year olds could be here telling you the exact same thing if we gave them a chance to pursue what they believed in. So all I want to say is we should give art a chance. It's time we made art a part of curriculums. When I said I wouldn't talk about my story, I meant I'd be talking about other stories, his story, her story, our story. And as time, it became more than just a fable. India, a country which is known for its rich culture, heritage and art, is so unsupportive of the same. All I want to say is, if art can change the world and if all of us have a little bit of we can change the world in us, it's time we did. Thank you. Thank you everybody for making Esperance 2.0 bigger, better and more glamorous. To see you in Esperance 2.1 which is happening on the 8th of December. So until we meet again, adios.